Europe's food print. Fashion is a strange thing. In ancient times and through Middle Ages, men wore skirts. Today they wear trousers. Fashion also depends on where you live. In Scotland, for instance, people don't mock a man in a skirt. They call it a kilt. In Europe, it has been fashionable to criticize GMOs. Oh no, not GMOs, you'll hear people say. They're too new. But that's what many people have said about most technological advances that have helped us progress. In the 19th century, people believed that trains would frighten cows so much that they would no longer be able to produce milk. More recently, some people feared microwaves. Now almost everyone has one in their home. So following what is fashionable can be extremely counterproductive, especially when food security for billions of people is at stake. When the real issue is the need to produce food in a sustainable way and also live up to Europe's responsibility to fight world hunger. We Europeans like to believe we're doing our part. We buy food from everywhere in the world and of course that's good for trade. We also give millions in food aid each year. But at the same time, our own food production is stagnating and nearly 30% of our food is wasted. To feed ourselves, we depend on land outside our borders equivalent to the size of Germany. So, are we really doing everything we can? Look, today there are 7 billion people on Earth. 925 million people are undernourished. In 2050, there will be 9 billion people. To be able to feed everyone decently, we will need to increase the global production of food by at least 70%. But one quarter of the Earth's land has already been badly degraded. And we already use more than 35% of the Earth's ice-free land surface for agriculture. Water is the other great challenge in food production. We need no less than 40 litres of water to produce just one slice of bread. In Europe, we import more water-consuming products than we export. Europe and other developed countries are actually responsible for a significant part of the water depletion plaguing developing countries. So morally, we have a responsibility to quickly find ways of growing more crops within Europe. And for that, given the limited amount of land available, clearly we need to produce more per hectare sustainably. In our society, it has been fashionable to think that organic food is the answer to this urgent problem. It may cost a bit more, but it is so green. And green and organic are trendy. It's great to have this option, but there is one drawback. Organic farming often requires more land to produce the same amount of food. Look at it this way. By planting GM crops, harvests can be bigger. This means we could reduce our net land imports by one-sixth so biotech crops can actually help us reduce our food print beyond Europe's borders. So really, GMOs can be greener than any other crops. And did you know that thanks to GM crops, 19 billion less kilos of carbon dioxide per year go into the atmosphere? These are facts, green facts. Biotech crops are important for jobs and the economy. Worldwide, no less than 16 million farmers make a living from growing them and 90% of them farm small areas of land. In developing countries, farmers' income increased by 1 billion euros last year thanks to biotech crops. So, what do we need to do? Well, we need to think again. Rejecting biotech crops because they are not the perfect solution is the current trend. But there is no perfect solution. The facts have changed. In fact, our world has changed. And an open mind is more vital than ever before. As the great economist John Maynard Keynes once said, when the facts change, I change my mind. What do you do? GM crops. Hmm. It's time to think again.